Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Are you having a wonderful time? Yeah. You know, today is the last day of the year. I mean, the last Sabbath of the year. The last Sabbath. And as you all know, uh, everybody made plans, right? Uh, every year, at the beginning of the year, a lot of people make plans. Uh, there are some who buy a new calendar and they say this is going to be the year for me to be organized. <laughs> There's others who say this is going to be the year that I'm going to lose weight. <coughs> others say this year is mine. I'm going to get married this year. Uh, somebody said, oh no. Uh, there's others who say, this year I'm going to read the whole Bible from cover to cover. You know, we all make plans. And there is some of them who start with a lot of enthusiasm at the beginning of the year. And then, as Brother Ellie said, uh, when they are close to March, April, things start coming down and down, and then we forget about our plans, and, we, and then we wait until the next year. But there is something that I know, that Jesus is coming soon. You know, I was thinking about putting the title of my presentation today based on something that I saw this week. I saw kids playing hide and seek. And I saw one of them counting, one, two, three, then ten. And she said, ready or not, what? Here I come. I said, you know, that's a good title. <laughs> ready or not, here will come. You must be ready. Because I know for sure that he will come. And I read the other day, you know, uh, you know when people get in love, this lady met this young, handsome men in the workplace. And they, they got in love, they started knowing each other, and uh, he started sending emails, you know, writing letters, uh, bringing flowers, and then this, the big day, he invited her to go out. And she was excited. And she said, yes, next weekend we are going out, our first day. And from his part of the family, he was the only boy. He had uh, two older sisters. And he knew girls very well. So they came, and the lady was so excited, so excited. And she started cleaning the house in the morning so she can give a good impression. And she started getting ready. Uh, she was cleaning everything, she got a, this beautiful dress, and then she started uh, getting ready. Hair was in place on time, and, and she put the dress, she put the, the perfume, and then she was getting ready. And then the time came, it's 7 o'clock, so he will come soon. And she started getting ready, and she was really excited. She was waiting, and waiting, and waiting. And at 8 o'clock, she said, he is not coming. So she got disappointed, she got mad, it was 8.30, she went to the room, undressed, she messed up her hair, she went to the kitchen, put some popcorn, turned on the TV and started watching movies. She was mad. And then one of the seven, when she opened the door, this man said, I gave you two more extra hours and you are not even ready? <laughs> and you know, in the time we're living, I see the Christian this way. We, let me tell you this, my experience. From when I was a child, I, I hear people saying, Jesus is coming soon. And I don't blame people who said, well, well where is he now? Because... I know that. They always say he will come, but he's not here. Well, 
Give me a little bit more time, please. And I know it's late, but don't get desperate because I want you to be clear that Jesus is coming soon. So we're going to go through the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about this. And they, in the time that we are living, if you really want to know whether he's coming or not, sit down for one day and watch the news and you will see what is happening around the world. But not only that, go and see the Adventist news too. So you can know what the gospel is doing around the world too. The sign is telling us that Jesus is coming soon. And we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. And the thing is that we are so busy today. We're so into many things that we forget our mission and our purpose here on earth. And we are so distracted that we even keep the second coming of Christ out of our mind. We only remember about his coming when something big is happening. It's happening. No. Oh, 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 look what happened. The law, the Sunday law. Oh, oh, he, he is coming soon. So that, that, that means that he is not ready. And remember the Bible said that he is coming as what? I don't know if the Philippines they do that. But in my country, those people don't call you at the middle of the week and tell you, hey, are you going to be home this weekend? Because I'm trying to go and get in your house and steal everything you have. Are you going to be there? And I say, oh yes, Steve. You know, I'm going to be. I'm going to leave the back door open, so you don't have no trouble. So you can get in. He will come as what? On the night. Do we know the time and the hour? No. But we know that he will come. So we have to be ready. The same way you protect and be ready in your house, right? Let's go. You know, in the Bible, from the beginning, we see that, please, thank you, that the certainty that Christ returned, we can see it from the beginning. You know, in John 14, 3, it says here, I will what? Come again. And Jesus is not like you or me. We promise and sometimes we don't what? But he is not like us. If he promised us the same way that we see in Isaiah that when the time came, the son was born, if he said that he will come, he will come. And he promised that. In Jude 14, 15 said, and who? Enoch, from the beginning, Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of this, saying this, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. So, even Enoch was preaching about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And also, we see also in the Bible, in Psalm 50, verse 3 and 5, our God shall come and shall not keep what? Silence. So the promise is there. We know that He will come and He is, he is coming. Let's look at the manner of Christ's return. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 23 and 24 wow. said there, Then if any man shall say unto you, hmm, Lo, here is who? Christ? Or there? Believe it, believe it not. For there shall arise, what? False Christ and false prophet, and shall shew grew sign and wonders. In so much that, if it were possible, they shall deceive who? And you know, I see Christian people that say, that's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to me. Let me tell you this. Just this last week, 
I saw a few people, even Seventh Day Adventists, posting in the website, in the Facebook, oh, we're still here. Because the who? The May, ma, ma, the Maya? The calendar? That predict that, that the, the end of the world was about the what, December 21st, something like that? Huh? December 21. And, and, and they were expecting something to happen. And they post the same morning. Oh, we're still here. And I said, come on. And everybody was making joke about the Maya. Everybody, even Christian people. And I praise God that this is happening. Church, do not lose the focus on what is going on. Let me tell you what is going on here. We're getting so used to things happening this way that we are not even believing that He is coming. That we are not ready for His second coming. Because the Bible says here that we will hear people... Christ is here. He will come in this day. And because he didn't come in that day, that is the devil working behind these days. So we get so used to this that we are not get even ready for his second coming. Right? The same way is like this. When we hear, I remember when I was a child. It was not a long ago. <laughs> but um, like uh, when we heard the news 50 people got killed in this world 50 people it was a big news but now 300 people died oh, sorry, <laughs> yes you know what happened in Connecticut so some people say that's another Crazy man. Do you mean another crazy man? It's like we're getting so used to what is happening that we are missing the point. We are missing the point. We're only focused on the news, but not what is behind the news. Am I clear on this? Are we clear on this? Look what the Bible had to say about this. Next, please. Thank you. Now learn a parable of what? Of the what? When his branch is yet what? Tender. And what? You know that what is coming? Summer is coming next, right? So, like, why is he when ye shall see all what? These things know that it is what? Near. Even what? At the door. So everything that is happening today is for us to get ready. It's not news. It's for us to get ready. We need to know that he is near even at the door. And I praise God for that. I praise his name. Not because people are dying, not because a lot of things is happening, but because he is coming. He is coming. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand here? The second coming of Christ is what? Literal? And I like this word. This word. It's personal. It's personal. The same way that Jesus went up to heaven is the same way that he will come back. And I know that a lot of people think and believe about the rap rapture or but I know, because of the Bible, that he will come the same way they saw him going. 
His return is also visible. Behold, he cometh with the cloud, and every eye in the Philippines, in Hong Kong, in Mexico, in the Dominican Republic, in Africa, they will all see Jesus coming. And every eye shall see him, and they also will pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, amen. We will all see him coming. His coming is also what? Audible. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with what? With a shout. I remember, I don't know if this is true or no. If this is a joke, but in my country they used to say that a man was so in love with Jesus. And he was so in love with his second coming that one Christmas night he was out. Uh, he was in his house and he went to bed early. And his daughter was sleeping in the other room. And this man was in love with his daughter and he hired these mariachi people so they can come. And you know they, 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 they had trumpet, right? And, and that, that day in church they had this wonderful worship and they were, they were talking about the second coming of Christ. So that was in his mind. And this man said, hey, let's go and do a serenata. You know what serenata is? So, he, what? Serenade. Serenade, okay. <laughs> but I, I, I praise God that we are a Hispanic and African. And, uh, um, and you know, and, and, and they came and he was excited and they start playing the trumpet. And this man got up. Jesus is here! <laughs> and he said, Jesus is here! And he was, he was so excited. And then he, when he saw this man outside, he was so mad. Because he was not Jesus. But his return will be what? So it's not like surprise. We will all see, we hear, and we were there. But also, his return will be glorious. You know, when I when I look at the pictures, like for example, this one, when I look at that, and I look the angels around, and Jesus in the middle, and everything, I mean, I, I, you know, it brings goosebumps of you. I, I get so excited. To see this glorious day of Jesus coming. When you look up in the air, you will see Jesus and everything there. I mean, are you excited about seeing Jesus in this way? And we will see him this way. Glorious before the Son of Man shall come into the glory of his Father with his angel. And then he shall reward every man according to what? Keep that in mind. But this is something that we need to be really careful of. The coming is sudden and what? Unexpected. For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So that means that we need to be careful and we need to be ready when sun after this sermon, every day. And I know, I know that Houston is so crowded. I know that from we have to wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I know that it's an hour away to go to work. I know that we are so busy working our schedule, eight or 12 or I don't know how many hours. I know that when you come back home, you have to clean, maybe cook. And I know that you are so busy. But please, my brothers and sisters, he is coming soon, sudden, unexpected, and we need to be ready. Despite of the world, so busy, 
We need to be ready. <coughs> For as the days that were before the flood, they were what? Eating and what? Eating and drinking like 2012. People are eating and drinking and they're so into many things. And you know, church, my brothers and sisters, with love, I want to say this. Satan is working so hard with the media, with Hollywood, with the music, that, 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 that we are receiving, we are putting in our mind things that are not helping us to see clear in the day that we're living. Now you know what happened? It's so easy for you to sit down and watch a movie when you see a man and a man sitting together as a boy and girlfriend or wife and you laugh about it. As I heard before, Lord have mercy. It's so common to watch in a movie or in a series on TV when you see a boy and a girl that don't even know each other go and have intimacy without even getting married and we laugh about it. I heard this other day a movie called Friends with Benefit. And there are many people who watch the movie and they laugh about it. It's the opposite of what God wants us to learn and to live. The devil wants us to go in another direction. It is okay if you look at it. I mean, now we, we accept that as normal. And God is coming Sudden and what? Now there is an article that came out in the news in CNN, New York Times, that it doesn't matter if you drink one or two or three, it's good for your health. <laughs> I was thinking about Sister Mugupe. I said, oh my. It's actually help your blood. It's okay. How about those DWI, those people who are getting killed? But it's okay. It's okay. For us, the days of where they were what? Eating and drinking. Marrying and what? And giving into marriage. And then what happened? The flood came, yes or no? Ready or not, it came. And those who were ready, what happened with them? To them? And those who were not ready, sorry for them. The sign of Christ soon return. The first one. And there shall be sign in where? In the sun, and in the moon, and in the star. And open the earth, the stress of nation with what? The fraternity of the sea and the wave roaring. It's Luke chapter 25, 1, verse 25. Luke in Mark 13. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be what? Darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. And the star of heaven shall fall. And the powers and the earth. And people are waiting for this. And I got great news for you. I got great news for you. Let's look at the witness of the, of the earth. In fulfillment of, the, of, of this prophecy, the largest known earthquake occurred on November 1st, 1755. Known as the Lisbon earthquake, it affected 
were observed in where? Europe, Africa, and America. Covering the area of about 4 million square miles. Its destruction centered on Lisbon, Portugal, where in a matter of minutes, it leveled public and residential buildings, causing a score of thousands of deaths. And that was in, what, 1755. But how about Haiti? How about Haiti? How about those earthquakes in Haiti, Japan, church? I heard that in the Philippines, just what, a week ago? A week ago? In the place that they were not used to get this kind of a typhoon. Something happened, right? And it was not in this area? No. And it happened. And how many people died? It was in the news the whole week. Thousands of people died. The witness of the sun and the moon. In fulfillment of this prophecy, on May 19, 1780, an extraordinary darkness descended upon the northeastern part of North American continent. And I have something here that I want to read. Recalling this event, Timothy Dwight, president of the Yale University, said that the 19th, the 19th of May in 1780 was a remarkable day. And it was in the newspaper that candles were lighted in the many houses. The birds were silent and despaired. It was a chaos. <laughs> Even the animals were scared. They didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I remember that we saw in Luke and in Mark that the moon, the darkness, and the earthquake, and all this was going to happen. Let's see the witness of the stars. The great meteoric shower in November 13, 1833. The most extensive display of falling stars on record fulfilled this prophecy. It was estimated that a single observer could see an average of how many? 60,000 per hour. How many? 60,000 per hour. It was seen from Mexico to Canada. From the mid-Atlantic to the Pacific. Isn't this amazing? But how about our days? How about the sign in the religious world? The great religious awakening. Do you remember that? When this happened? Huh? When this happened? Do you remember that before we used to be slave, and in 1798, our eyes were open into the truth of the Bible. Those of you who know the church story, who know this. How about the preaching of the gospel? What the Bible has to say about the preaching of the gospel? And this, what? Gospel shall be Pray, where, where, where? Huh? All around the world. And then what happened? And now we have satellites. And us, as a seven day Adventist, we represent about 700 languages and a thousand dialects. Only us, the Seventh Day Adventists. 8,882 languages and dialects 
are our publications translated. And we are around the world, everywhere. Satellite, TV, we are going in different ways. So now, the gospel is being preached where? Around the world. How about the religious decline? Huh? And I don't think that I need to go deep on this because we all know what is happening around. We all know what is happening. How about the decline of religion freedom? That's why I want you to get the facts and look at the Adventist news. We have uh, <coughs> missionaries in different places that are suffering in countries that you cannot even preach about Jesus. How about this pastor in Congo? Tongo, Congo, I don't know. Tongo, right? Tongo. Togo, Togo. Huh? How about this missionary that was in the in the in the, in the border that he got uh, he got killed? He was a seven day Adventist and he got killed because he was preaching the gospel. Not only this, the increase of wickedness. Next please. The surge in the world crime. Now, I don't, let me ask maybe who is the oldest man here in, in, in church? Uh -huh. <laughs> who? Tatan? Tatay Baisa. Ask him if, he, if in his time they, they, saw, they saw a young man of age of 13 killing his father and his mother. Ask him. Do you understand? No. Somebody ask him. Now, in 2012, it is so common that a young man of the age of 13 got the gun of his father and killed his mother and his father. How about the sexual revolution? I got a friend. Seven day Adventist. She got married last year at the age of 29. And when she got married, she was a virgin. And in the workplace, they were making fun of her. In the 21st century, you are so old fashioned. The war and calamities. Natural disaster. It's everywhere. The climate. Earthquakes. The families. Now, church. When we see all this, and I'm cutting because of the time. But when we see all this, don't you think that Jesus is coming soon? This is not a news from us. This is from the Bible. This is from the Word of God. And now I know something. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23. Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. And 23. The time that we are living is a time of wise decision. And Jesus will come soon. And we need to be prepared. And he says here that many will say to me in that day when we see Jesus face to face, Lord, Lord, how we not prophesy in thy name? Come on, Jesus. I 
was in church every Sabbath. I make my effort to be there for the second service. I was there and support the crusade in this year. I was there in church listening. And what happened? Come on. Father, Lord, Lord, I even prophesy in your name to my friend. And in thy name have cast out the and in thy name, though, many wonderful works. Remember when we went to the fifth tree? Remember when we started giving food out and all this and that, and I helped people, and I even gave money for the church building project. I did a wonderful work. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. This is sad. It's really sad. This is really sad. Sometimes we take a pill to control the symptoms, but not the real problem. Our real problem is spiritual. Submission to God's will. To give our life to Him. So, if in this next year you want to make a plan and commitment, make a plan to give your life entire to Jesus Christ. Amen. To reconnect with Him. To rededicate your life and time and effort. As Brother Ali said before, your house will burn. Yes. And I don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. And I like what... Uh, the, uh, the reading of Brother Erwin the other day. If we are blessed by God, we are blessed in so many ways. And we can be blessed in money and house and families and everything. But in the meantime, do not forget about Jesus. Don't let the word, don't let the money, don't let your profession to take the place of Jesus Christ. Because he will come soon. And then you will be caught up here in this earth. Because of those many things that is happening around us. And this is sad because many people will say, Ah, oh God, but I was here and there. And I do not know you. This is sad. It is sad. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. It says there, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, know not the angel of heaven, but my Father only. You probably will ask me, okay, I know Jesus is coming soon. I am so busy. What should I do? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 2. Verse 14 and verse 15. This is the picture of a real Christian. This is, this is to be our picture in this coming year. Now thanks be unto who? Unto God. Which always causes us to what? Triumph in who? In Christ. And make it manifest the Savior of His knowledge by us in every place. That means that in every place we go, they need to see Jesus in me. Not me, but Jesus. That is a relationship. That's an intimacy. When you walk with Him every day, they will see who? Jesus in you. And look what the verse 15 says. I like this. For we are unto God a what? A sweet what? Savior what? Of Christ. I praise God for this. 
For him, I, I can imagine the angels and God and Jesus looking down and saying, hey, you see Brian? Oh, he looks like you. Do you see Ben Ellie? He looks like you. Do you see Pat? Do you see Erin? Do you see? They, they all look like you. Do you see Maria? They look like you. People can smell you when they are around. They can smell you. And now let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 12. For 2013, Romans chapter 12, verse 12. It says here what? Rejoicing in what? In hope. What is our hope? What is our hope? Come on, say it. What is our hope? The second coming. Don't you want him to come soon? Yes. This week, this week, on Wednesday, I received a call from a friend of mine and another man that we knew that we were trying to give out this day. He was going to Dallas to meet with his family and he didn't make it. They were all sitting outside the house and the police came over. And he said, are you? And he said, yes. And he said, I got the news that your husband died. But he left this morning. And he was right there. Another new baby, only five months old. The mother was so busy, she forgot about the baby. Over. Down, Another true story. Many things are happening around us. Rejoice in the hope. Patient in what? In tribulation. And I love this part. Continuing in what? In what? In prayer. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 21st. For those of you, Revelation chapter 21. Jesus is coming, and let me picture something that is going to happen. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. And I saw, what? A new... Heaven. Amen. 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 And a new what? Earth. Earth. Amen. 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 We're going to meet with our loved one. <coughs> For the first heaven and the first earth, where what? And there was no more sea. Verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more, what? Death. Neither sorrow, no crime, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are what? Passed away. Praise God. When I was on the phone with this family, the only thing that I could say to a crying wife was, I know that Jesus is coming soon. I know that He is coming soon. Let me ask you this, church. Don't you want to be in this place? Don't you want to be in heaven? 
Don't you want to go to heaven? No sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. So don't let this world to distract your attention of keeping your eyes away from the second coming. Jesus is coming soon. So keep your eye in heaven. Keep Jesus in your heart. And keep the hope up every day. Because you will see him soon face to face. Amen. Don't you want to make a commitment for this next year? Huh? Don't you want to give your whole life to Jesus Christ? To rededicate your life for him? You know, it was a challenge for me. And, and, and you know that I don't talk too much. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm, a, I'm so excited about talking the second coming and this and that. And I prepare a, 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 a slide of uh, around 50 or 60. But the time is short. And I know you're hungry. <laughs> And I thank God because I think if I believe at the beginning of this year I preached and now at the end of the year I say, oh thank you Lord thank you for the privilege you know I don't know if I will see you again I don't know but at least I want to keep the hope in my heart that when I see you again it will be better I don't know if we will see each other next Sabbath. We don't know. We don't even know if he will come tomorrow or tonight. But be ready. <coughs> be prepared. That if you know that he is really coming tonight. You know, I see Brother Santa next to his wife. Don't you want to be go going to heaven together like that? Huh? Amen? Yes. Holding hands. Let's go, honey. Let's go home. Don't you want to see your brother again? Sister Elia. Huh? Don't you want to go with your kids together to heaven, Brother Ellie? You know, I pray every day that my whole family, I love my family. I was preaching this week to a group of people and I told them that I have three women. They were like, yes. I don't know how to share this big love, this love of my life. And the youngest one is the one who is really still in my love. Because the, the others that they are so busy. <laughs> But the, the youngest one is the one who comes to die. But I want them to be in heaven. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, fathers. Don't you want your whole family to go to heaven too? Amen. Brother Ben. Brother Erwin. <coughs> Henry. So do your best. To keep God at the center of your house. Amen. Let them know that Jesus is coming soon. And repeat it if it's possible every week. So they, they keep playing in their mind. And their mind. But you prepare yourself and your family to travel together to heaven and see Jesus face to face. Amen. I am, let me tell you this, I am praying to God that he will come this year. And I, I, I talked to him and I said, God, we're tired. We're tired. There's some of us who are, don't, sometimes we don't even have money. There are others who are sick. There's others who are suffering. We're tired. We want to go. But he's waiting for us. Because he doesn't want us 
to go to another place, not to heaven. So my invitation to you is this. Do you really want to go to heaven? Do you want to be ready for His second coming? Ready for His second coming to go with Him forever? We're going to do something different today. I'm going to call the elders to please come in the front. Brother Ellie, Brother Abby, Brian, Sister Ruby, Brother Edwin, what else? I also want to call Pastor Buena. Where's Pastor Buena? Oh. Um, I know that the challenge is big. I know that maybe you are sitting there looking at me and telling me, ha, huh, you know it's not easy. In the situation that I am, it's not easy. Well, I know. Now, let me tell you this. I won't give you the time, but is there, if here is there anybody who knows what you're going through is me. And I pray to God every day. And I know that He will take care of us. He will take care of you. He will take care of each one of us. If He is your decision today to rededicate your life to Him, and in this 2013, you want to see your life grow spiritually, then give your life to Jesus Christ today. And make the commitment to be ready for his second coming because we know that he's coming soon. So we're going to do this. Let me see the hands of those who are struggling or who have somebody in the family struggling uh, physically with uh, stand up. The church is not that big, but we're big enough. I want to ask Brother Ellie to go there and go with him. He is going to pray with you. Go with him. Go with him. I want to ask you in the name of Jesus when he pray keep the faith in your heart. Because I know that He is true, He is real, and that miracles can happen even today. Let me ask you this. I want to see the hands of the, uh, the youth, please. The youth, not the young adult, the youth. Stand up. Stand up. The youth. <laughs> There you. I'm gonna, there's another place over there. Brian. He's going to pray. I have a situation now because I want to see mothers. The mothers. I know that you care for your children. Mothers. Stand up. Mothers. And we have a good representation in our church, Sister Ruby. Can you go with them and pray for her? Maybe in the back over here. In the back there. Mothers. This is a challenge for you this year for your children. And now I want to see the fathers. That's the point now. Fathers, maybe take this the right hand here. Over here. And now I want to see the kids. Stand up the kids. Stand up. Kids, come here. Now the Edwin is here. And he's going to pray for you and with you. 
Stay there. Uh, Edwin is going to pray with you and for you. Now, we're going to give you enough time to pray. Those of you who are there, join any group. Doesn't matter. We're going to give you enough time, and at the end, we're going to ask Brother Ali to pray for all of us as, a, as a, the head of the prayer ministry. And we are going at the end to sing a song, and we are going to finish with another prayer to rededicate our life to Jesus in this 2013. So let's all pray. of your word that my house shall be called a house of prayer even as your children have come together in prayers to seek your face 
Lord, we thank you because we know there's no other place that we can go except to you. And even before we open our hearts, you are already waiting for us. Lord, as we have prayed in different groups, opening our hearts to you for the wonderful things that you will do for us and in our lives. All that we want to say this afternoon is to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening our faith to believe that you will do what you have promised to do. Thank you, Lord, for the healing that is already flowing out at this hour to touch us and heal our infirmities. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening our faith in you to know that it is well with us. And above all, thank you for the hope of your second coming. Because someday we will say bye-bye to the sweet hour of prayer. And that's when we'll see you face to face, Lord. We thank you for what you have done for us this afternoon. And we pray that for the rest of our lives that we shall continue to remember this day for good. Because it shall be the day that we have re renewed our covenant with you to be faithful even unto the end. Lord, bring us back again for a time of testimony. Because through this prayer, you will give us many testimonies to the glory of your holy name. For the fathers, please make us the fathers that you want us to be. For the mothers, please make them the mothers that you want them to be. For the young people, please establish them in your love, even as they go through these difficult times. And Lord, for the children, please establish them in your love, even as they are growing in this difficult world. And as we have prayed for healing, we thank you so much because we know. You have done it in the past and you will do it again to the glory of your holy name. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.